Bless you, bless you, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Apostle Peter Daniel. You are watching me right now in Heaven and Hell Life program, the one we used to do every Monday to Friday, every Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. By the special grace of God, today we are going to uh, another message from the Lord from the Lord, from the Lord. I pray the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everlasting Father, eternal rock of age, the beginning and the ends, the only one of Israel. We say thank you because you never fail us. Thank you because you are the Almighty. Thank you, Jesus, because you are the living God. Be that glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We hold, oh Lord, we ask you, Father, that as they are worshiping me now, you are going to open their heart to understand the, 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 the mystery of your word and to see you in this message not me but you only thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen the lord bless you in the mighty name of jesus i remain a hospital daniel as i've said before today i have a revelation and uh, i was asking god in my dream i was asking the lord what should i teach your people there are many messages god has given to me but I would, I would not like a situation whereby I will begin to teach people. I will begin to be, be I will begin to be the one to choose the message to teach the people. I, I will always, I always want him to tell me what to tell them, because he's the one that knows the right thing, the right message at the right time. So I asked him, and he told me something. He said, "I should teach you that our God." Is a jealous girl. He told me from the dream that I have to say it out. Our God is a jealous girl. There are so many instances we are going to talk about today by the grace of God. But this is the point he has first told me that I should tell you now. That should tell you that he is a jealous girl. He is a jealous God. And because he is a jealous God, because he is a jealous God, many people will end up in hell for that. You might not understand now why we are spending. Our God is a type of God that he always wants us to make him our priority. Our number one priority. He wants us to make him our number one priority. Our number one priority. Our no, please note what I said. He did not want to be secondary. He did not want to be third day. He did not want to. He, did, he didn't want you to take a decision and later on. And later on come and consult him. He wants to be first of your life. First of your own life. That is what who God is. God asked, when God told me that it's a jealous God, I begin to wonder that what exactly did you want me to tell these people? And I picked my barrel. I was just, I just picked my barrel. I was waiting for his instructions to go ahead. Then he began to mention things to me. He mentioned many things to me, which I want to tell you. Many Christians have find themselves in a big mess because they failed to recognize the importance, the importance of God. The importance of God. They fail to understand that they are not of their home. God owns their life. Number one thing I'm going to talk about is this. God. 
God will never share his glory with your phone. God himself will never share his glory with your phone. I'm going to emphasize in different things this morning. And I'm going to tell you a solution. And I'm going to tell you the outcome of what probably is, might be things you have been doing before and you did not know. God will not share his glory with your phone. In sense of some people, the time they're supposed to pray, they will be pressing for number shatter. They will be pressing phone and be chatting with somebody. The time they're supposed to say Jesus Christ, they are, pre- they are on their phone on social media. If such, in such a case, if you die at that point, you are going nowhere but hellfire. Because our God is a God that jealous. He is is jealous both on Christians, I mean the members as a Christians, and is also jealous both on the unbelievers. He does the different here is just that his jealousy in the life of unbeliever is limited, compares to the one he has for his own children. His jealousy over his children is very high. I know somebody might say that how will God be jealous about uh, the life of the sinner? If God is not jealous about the life of the sinners, about the way they live, why would God have to struck Nebuchadnezzar? Why would God have to exchange? Why would God have to exchange varsity? To us with Esther. So it means God also involved in every area. But now I'm not referring to unbeliever now. I want to come to Christian though. But I'm just saying it because I know some people will say that why, why would God have to involve in? I want you to know that to God, to God, to God Himself, to God Himself. Our way of life matter to him, both the Christian and the unbeliever. And if he hates the unbeliever, it's only that he cannot accept them as his own child, except they repent. He's the one that created everyone. Another thing that the Bible also refines when they come to unbeliever is Herod. The Bible said God struck Herod when he was tried. Pride was in him, and God struck him down. So it's because God is a God of jealousy. When you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you begin to do is to press your phone, and you begin to press your phone, and what you are doing on your phone is not, you know, you didn't even recognize God. First, the first thing you do is to wake up in the morning and go and greet your husband when you have not greeted God. The first thing you want to go and do is that when you wake up in the morning, you first need to go and cook when you have not even talked to God. God will be seeing it as a priority, the number one thing in your life. And God can, because of that, destroy your life and take it to hell. The matter of God's jealousy is so high that he can destroy your life and also take you to hell. It's not a matter of taking you to hell only, sending you to hell only, but can also destroy lives. That is if he loves you. Because the punishment of you not taking God as number one is he has to destroy that thing that is making you high. If you bring your child, if your child is your number one, you place your child as number one priority than God. The only solution for the whole matter is God to kill that child. So I'm just trying to tell you the kind of implications that you didn't know that can cause a man who took something higher than God. 
the first thing or you repent if god talk to you and you see that your heart is so hard your heart is so hard that you cannot you cannot do without a tie your tie your tie i'm going to, to tie now tie matter now that's number two There's nothing you can do. That your child is number one. Is your is the reason why you are serving God. God will take it away from you because He's a jealous God. When God look at the heart of Abraham, God look at the heart of Abraham, and God see that He loves His child so much. God tested him. Listen to me. I want to tell you the deep thing about Abraham that you didn't understand. God tested him and tell him that that thing that he loves, bring it to me and sacrifice it. But when God wanted to test whether the love Abraham had for him is higher than his own. But when Abraham, when God said that Abraham bring the son, tie the son, and is about to slaughter the son for his namesake, his topic, just to confirm that truly Abraham loved him. Do you know that if Abraham did not do that, the Bible said, God, I cannot satisfy my son. God will have killed that son himself. God will kill the son, life and death, himself. And Take away the covenant in his life and go and find another man and place it in his life. There's one thing I want you to know that that God loves you does not mean that there's no one else that is not doing better than you. That God loves you, it is a grace. It doesn't mean that there's no one else that is not doing what you are doing or that is not doing better than you. It's just a grace. So when you now begin to misuse your opportunity, it will tell you that he has many, many people who he can also use. So Azumi Abraham, tell God and say, Lord, I can't sacrifice this sons. He will have buried if your son or your children is the reason why you come late to church, I pray God will not take the children from you. There was a particular man. This man is a worker in the church. But very poor. Very, very poor. In, he has everything to have job, but doesn't have it, no job for him. He will be the first person to get to the church. He will sweep the church. He will clean the church. He will do everything. And keep asking God in faith. Until one day, God decided to bless him. He did not just bless him. He makes him a millionaire. Somebody who is having... 300 millions in his account. More than that in his account. Since the time God now making me lolia, he began to evolve in different kind of business. He now began to come to church very late. He decided when to come to church. He decided when to attend the service. If the pastor make a revival without his consent, he will not come. Because he will tell the pastor that, why did you tell me? You do not have a business meeting I have to attend. And God looked at him like this. Within a few months, God took away every property he has given to it. Every property he has given to him and make him a beggar back to his place. When he now became a beggar, 
he now come back to his service again. I said something to you that time. Our God is a jealous God. If your child is so important than God, God can take it away from you so that you will not perish in hell. Listen to me. If it is your husband or wife that is also important to you, whether in the things you cannot just leave your wife, you, you are you so much love him so much that, oh God, if anything happened to your wife or your husband now, you can leave God. You can you don't even pray anything happens. But when it happens, God is at has takes. He will take away that wife from you. The reason is because he wanted to be number one in your heart. Anything that will take the position of God as number one. God is ready to destroy that thing. If your wife is the one that is making you sin against God most time, God is ready to take away that wife from you in every mess. God is ready. I was told in the dream, it's not the matter of, I'm trying to, no. He said, I should tell you, I don't know the area. God is becoming number two in your heart. But I'm just telling you, things that take Christian to hell, it's not just you wearing mini skirt, wearing trousers, committing sins. There are these kind of things you didn't know that is a kind of dangerous thing that can bring God anger on you immediately. I want you to begin to search your heart. What is your number one priority? Is it God or your husband? Is it God or your wife? What is the thing that is making God secondary? Today, if your husband tell you that if you did not wear trousers or you did not become a worldly Christian, he will leave you. Won't you be here and go back to the world? Listen to him. Listen to me. There is a story of a particular brother. It is not a matter of a... It's a real life story. This Boko Haram of a team, they came to a church. They killed a lot of people and they carried people who did not die. They carried them to the forest. And when they carried them to the forest, it happened that pastor of that church was there. While masters, members, they were many. They carried them. And they just pity all of them that they carry. So they begin to ask them questions. If they can become a Muslim, they spread them, they are not going to kill them, they will free them to become part of them. When they come to the choir master, Muslim or Jesus, he says, sir, I not be Christian, you just see me for church. I not be Christian. <laughs> I, be Muslim. I love Muslim from the, my, from the bottom of my heart. It's okay, this one don't deny crap. They put them aside. It's a real life. The man who it happened to now, he took up. They come to other members. All of them deny Jesus. At the point of AK-47. Bomb. And the sword. When they came to pastor, and this pastor is a very strong pastor, everybody was like, ah, thank God. We know that he will stand. The man of God said, sir, what do you talk? I said, Jesus or Islam? He said, <laughs> He said, sir, that one will be difficult for me. I said, before they cracked the door, the man said, sir, 
Today I deny Jesus, the pastor. And he said, Islam. When he said that, there's this a very young man who just got converted among them. And they said, Islam. Because all the people, all of them said Islam. So this young man, they believe he will going to, is going to say Islam because he's just a new convert. Islam or Christian? He said Christian. He said, what? Christian. They set him aside. All the people who say Islam, they put them to free them. And the masters, the, the leaders of the, of the Boko Haram, they asked them to point the gun at the man who said is uh, Christ is the only one who says so. And they point the gun at him before the man the man wanted to say shoot. Before the man said shoot, something came to the man's mentality. They appointed him crack it to gun to gun the man. He came to his mind mentality and I said, ah, if these people can deny their God, then he will deny us. And he said, hey, do shoot him again. He said, you are going to shoot these people. He said, ah, why, why, sir, why, sir? They say Islam, sir. He said, if these people can deny their God, their God, they too will deny us at the point of God. And they say, you that say Christ will free you. Go now. Go. So they ask somebody to take him, blindfold him, take him out of the forest and release him and he go. You see, at his present, all the people who say Islam, they shoot them and they kill them. What I'm saying, the Bible says, he that saved his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for the sake of Christ shall save it. Whatsoever will become priority, important than God in your heart will be taken away from you. I used to tell people, I didn't, I don't do any ministry because of anybody. And you know what? If people like, if people like, let them go and say they didn't, they didn't want a hospital again. Let it become only me. I will still serve God. I will, my love for him will still remain. I will still continue to serve him. Let my wife say, I suppose we don't want you again. I should have said that, Daddy, we don't want you again. It will pay me, but just going to be a short time. I will move on again. Because I have a place I'm going to. The matter of Christianity, of serving God, is a personal decision. We should not, your job should not become priority. They are telling you now, see, this is a problem now you are having. They are telling you that you should go to the camp, prayer camp, to go and serve God. Come back to the time of, the time God created humanity, telling them to serve him only. God is calling his children all over the world. But because of your job, you cannot leave your job. You are there in the white country. It is a sign that God is not your priority. It's not your number one priority. And it means that he's just secondary in your life. That one enough is enough to take you to hell. And that one enough is enough. That one only is enough to take you to hell. You say because you cannot just leave your job, you don't want to become beggar. How will you survive? By the time the incident comes, you will call Jesus, he will not hear you again. Because he has won you. Thank God you are not deaf when they are talking about world war that is about to take place. You are reading it in the newspaper. You are reading it in YouTube. It's not something that is now a matter of a, a, a matter of a, it's not something that is now something that is scarce now. It's something that is everywhere. Everybody is preparing for the world war. 
everybody is preparing for the world war. And God is warning his own children, and you are there. Your husband is your priority. Your child is your priority. By the time the time comes, you will call the name of Jesus Christ. He will put a deaf ear to your prayer. Because you are disobeying him. Because you make him a second step. I remember there's a particular pastor. The pastor, I remember I met him when I was a very, very young age. Around the age of uh, uh, 12, 13 years old. This pastor, my mother took me to a friend's shop. So they were talking. I was there. And there was this a particular man there. That man was smoking. He was smoking and he was taking uh, alcohol with it. The smoking was so serious that he sit there. If when he finished one pack, he will take another one again. He was smoking seriously. So, as he was smoking, the word came to him. And how he came to him is this. They were just discussing, discussing about Christianity. And the man now said, he said, do you know me, pastor? Everybody said, yeah. He said, imagine if it were you, what would you do? I'm a holiness man of God. He was telling, I was there. He was, I was there when he was, it's not a matter of that. Maybe there is a story. No. I was there myself. He said, imagine if it were you, what would you do? He said he was a holiness man of God. He served God with all his heart. And one day, his wife, all his children were in the, in, in the, in the, in the bus. They were traveling. His own beloved wife and children. And they all have accident and they all died. He said, what? Where is the God he's serving? Since that day, he has decided to start smoking and be taking alcohol. He has decided not to serve God again. Now, such a man, you will understand that his own priority is his wife and his children. His wife and his children. There's somebody who is an example of his case and who did not leave God for one reason. And that is Job. Job did not leave God for any reason. He did not leave God for any reason. His wife denied him completely to the extent that his wife was telling him that he should, he should, he should, he should, he should, should cause God. His children died at, at, at the same time. All of them died in a day. All Everything he has on the head vanished. His money, his property, his Every business collapsed. The same day his sons and children died, the same day the business died, the same day his everything gone. And the same day he got sick. And this man did not for one day cause God. Rather, he placed cause on himself. This is the final judgment he made for himself. He said, will any man receive good things from God and not receive the bad one? That if he has been receiving good one and bad one happened to him. That he should say thank God. Eh? He said then he should say thank God for that. Hallelujah. That is an example of man. And God tested him. He allowed the devil to attack him. He tested, he wanted to know whether Job take him as for number one priority. But God restored him later. He restored him and drank forth. What am I trying to say? Whatsoever will become priority in your life, whether it is your beauty. There was a particular story of a particular sister. She's a Christian sister. Listen to me very well. She has been warned many times. She has been warned many times by a pastor not to be using the things of the world. She said, okay. Listen to me very well. Whenever she wake up in the morning, she will look at the glass like this. I begin to feel herself because she's very, very beautiful. She's very, very beautiful. 
when she's about to get married, she decided that on a wedding day, the whole world could know, say, person won't do marriage. The number one thing is because, the number one thing is that he, 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 will, he go back to his way of life, begin to use your ring, makeups, and call. And one day, his husband came to him and said, want to marry him? Ah. They make the date. About three to four days to the marriage. I think within three to four days or one week to the marriage. Her mother sent her to go and fetch water. Listen to me. It's a life story. Her mother sent her to go and fetch water. And where they used to fetch water is a rich man's house. The man permit them to be coming to the house to go and fetch water and come out. And this man has a dog. All this Australian dog. White man dog. Big dog. But this is what happened. The dog was always locked. It's always locked. They didn't even release her at all. It's always locked. And as this little sister came in to go and fetch water, he has already fetched the water. He saw the dog. He was even trying to play with the dog. The dog, he saw the keys was already locked. So it's not an issue of anything. As he was fetching the water, after finished fetching water, about going back to where he is it, suddenly a strange hand came to where the dog is and break the door break the gate the key of where the dog is loose the dog and lock the gate listen to me very well and what lock the gate as he was about going out he see that the lock, gate is already locked he string and lock it and the dog with anger, you are go, 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 go. He entered there. He, he, he take away his, his hair like this. He, he, he take it away. He bite it. He cut it away. He pieces his face. He didn't pieces anywhere in the body. Just the face only is where he, he, he hurt. He pieces. He take it out. He pieces the eyes and the hair. Where he put the ring, he pieces the place. He tear him and he go back to his his uh, his cage and say they are gentle. The sister begin to cry and and the door open on his own. She went out and she was rushed to the hospital. They bandaged her face. By the time the the husband came and saw the wife, he said, ah, "What happened?" They said, "Dog." By the time they opened the face. The, the eyes, the face has become very ugly. He said, I'm so sorry. I cannot marry this sister again. This is not the person I see that I wish to marry. This is not the face I saw. I'm so sorry I cannot marry her again. What am I saying? If your beauty, if your awesomeness is the one you believe that is so important to God, God will take it away from you. He will take it away from you. That thing that you are taking number one, he will take it away and make it useless to you. If it is your car, whatsoever might be the things that is making you feel that you are number one, he will take them away from you. There are some people that when they are sick. Pastor will pray for them. Or they will pray for them, their personal healing. Probably because they didn't get ill at that day. And they are taking drugs. Probably on the second day they get ill. When they are not going to give testimony, they will say the drug, I can't go for the drug I use, it heals me. That kind of testimony always provoke God. When you are attributing the kind of glory that's supposed to be for God to the medicine, that is why you always find yourself in problem and sickness. 
I'm trying to shed your light, your eyes, to the understanding of what God makes God jealous. Even the doctor always says something. He said, we treat. I don't know the language very well. They said, but God cures. I don't know how they should do it. He told me they care, they care and God cures, something like that. We cure and uh, we care and God cure. They, they themselves, the doctor themselves, they attribute the glory to God. The person who do medicine, he knows that if God said you are going to take the medicine and you are not going to get healed, there's something you can do. So they attribute it to God. But to you, when you take it, when anything happens to you, the first thing that is your matter is that you believe that no idea can come to you. You have class from somewhere there. That thing can cause your internal damnation. There are some people that God has taken to a very high place. By the time they begin to talk, they will say, eh, all this money, all the place, all the thing that I got is out of my hard working. Attributing the kind of God's glory to the hard working they are doing. It is like challenging the authority, telling you, telling God that you what you become today is nothing by, but by your hard working. God will take that thing that is making you boast, take it away from you. Take it away from you and make you useless. Another thing that can also make God very jealous is when a man of God sees himself. I'm talking to a man of God now. I've warned you before in my previous video, and I'm still going to warn you. You man of God that you always want people to lead down and be talking to you on their name. You are causing cause. You are, you are bringing cause to your life. You are bringing cause, and I don't know what to say to your life. He said, uh, "Is God?" He said, uh, "I'm their father in the Lord now, so they must be on their knee to talk to me." You are destroying your life because one, you cannot make it to heaven. Two, you are you are under God's cause. The Bible said, "Nico uh, Cornelius, Cornelius saw Peter and prostrated to Peter." Peter said, "Stand up." I am a man like you. Why will you prostrate? I'm not saying greeting your man of God in a humility way, leaning down or prostrate is a sin. But I'm saying that when they when they begin to see, when you begin to see your pastor as God, or your pastor begin to see himself as somebody more important, it's a, it's, a, it's dangerous. Please warn yourself. Warn yourself. One day I said. Because in the time of Jew, we know that in our culture here, in our culture here, the rate of respected elderly or somebody you honor is by prostrating or by leaning down. But in the caution of the Jewish, it's not so. Don't regard anybody as God. Please hear me clearly. Everybody was putting their head, they will bow down to the flat whenever a man is passing by. But Mordecai said, me, I will never bow down for any man. But God Almighty, it's not pride. It is their caution. The highest respect in the, in, probably they can give is to talk to them in a respectable way, you know, give them a respect in their own way. And I'm also not saying that because I say this, you see your pastor and you do like a, you are a guy. That's pride. It's well to take it to hell. Respect them according to your caution. Respect them according to how he knows that is the, that is the caution. But do regard them as God. Because God will always check your heart and your motive. If your motive is regarding God as secondary, you will go to hell. Not only that, anything you are going to do on earth, always be sure that God is number one. And anything you do that make God number two, you are in trouble. You will not go to hell in Jesus' name. This is the kind of warning that God asked me to give you. The kind of warning 
and I pray that you will not miss it at last in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God be with you. Please don't just go without subscribing. Subscribe and press notification button. That's one. Then number two, I want to give this announcement that by the grace of God, I'm working towards it. Every Monday will be a question and question and answer day. I will carry all the questions that I have made before. Probably the questions that have been asked on YouTube that have not answered them, I will begin to answer them and post them on Monday. Why? And I will also be running a online, Facebook online, whereby everyone can come there. It's, it's, that Facebook online is only, only going to be on Monday. When the time is going to be, I'm going to post it and I'm going to send you the time. So, I'm going to post it and send you the time. On that Facebook, that Monday will be fully for questions and answers. Any question you know that is disturbing you, you can ask there. I pray you will not go to hell in Jesus' name. God bless you. God be with you. And don't forget, subscribe and press notification button for you to hear more of the mystery of God's word. God bless you.